In this video, we present Marjorie, a visual analytics approach for the exploration of patterns in type 1 diabetes data. Type 1 diabetes is a chronic autoimmune disease in which patients must monitor their carbohydrate intake and inject the correct dosage of insulin to keep their blood glucose levels within a healthy range. Both low glucose levels, hypoglycemia, and high glucose levels, hyperglycemia, should be avoided. Glucose levels can be measured by continuous glucose monitoring sensors, which produce glucose values every 5 minutes, and the insulin can be injected through a pump. The patients require a small amount of basal insulin continuously throughout the day, and every time they consume carbohydrates, they need to calculate an additional correct insulin dose for the meal. This is called bolus insulin. Marjorie helps patients and their doctors to retrospectively analyze their data to find patterns and to optimize the therapy parameters. We demonstrate the usability of this tool through a case study now. The menu on the left side opens three views, summary, diary, and insights. The summary view provides an overview of the past weeks. The diary allows users to look up specific days. The insights view aggregates relevant situations such as meals and periods of hypoglycemia. The graph shows the ambulatory glucose profile, which is a visualization commonly used for diabetes data. It's an aggregation of multiple weeks of data over 24 hours. The sidebar on the right shows relevant statistics for this time frame. And we see that the patient generally has a good time and range of about 70% here in green, but has a problem with high glucose values highlighted in purple. In the graph, we can observe that the patient has elevated glucose during the night. In the morning, the glucose is in range and relatively stable, um, but after lunch, it rises again. We now want to explore the individual days in more detail. We here see an overview of the days that were aggregated for the profile above. The glucose is visualized by horizon graphs, so extreme values can be identified easily. And to see the detailed line plot, we can click on the expand button. Underneath, carbohydrates and insulin are presented in a heat map, where entries which occur within short time frames are summarized. Here, for example. We observe that during the night, there are long periods of high glucose. And when we look at the evenings, for example here, uh, we see that the patient often eats despite already having high levels of blood sugar, resulting in problematic nights afterwards. A particularly high glucose period occurred here on 26th of November, and we don't immediately see any reason for that here. Um, and to look up the details of this day, we go to the diary view. Uh, here we see the glucose along with carbohydrate, bolus and basal data and the corresponding statistics of that day. In the bar chart, adjacent entries are summarized to prevent overplotting and the summarized bar split up into the components when we zoom into the graph. Now we navigate to the 26th of November to observe the high glucose period uh, that we discovered earlier. And we see that during the night, the basal rate delivery of the pump was interrupted, explaining the uncontrolled rise of values. Next, we navigate to the insights view. Here, four hour windows that contain meals are extracted from the dataset and clustered by glucose similarity. This results in a collection of typically occurring glucose patterns during a meal. On the right, there's a filter sidebar that shows an overview of all the extracted data. And users can select a preferred time of day or a preferred meal size they want to filter for. And we can see, for example, pattern 3 shows a summary of situations where the glucose increased after the meal, um, but eventually returned to the initial value, value. We also immediately see a possible explanation for the increase when observing the pre-bolus time here. On average, the insulin was injected 18 minutes after the meal in this pattern, so a consideration for the patient would be to administer the bolus earlier. We now navigate to the hypos tab, which clusters typical glucose profiles around low blood sugar incidents. And we see that there are two main patterns. In the first, which occurred mainly during the morning, um, the glucose levels are mostly within the target range before and after the hypoglycemia. And in the second, the glucose levels sink rapidly, enter hypoglycemia, and then return to high levels once more, probably due to binge eating of the patient. The conclusion that can be drawn from using Marjorie is that the patient's therapy quality is generally okay, but the hyperglycemia periods can be reduced. So possible considerations to improve the therapy are not to eat when the glucose levels are already high in the evening and to inject the bolus insulin with adequate time before meal. 
This avoids entering this loop of high blood sugar, too much correction insulin, resulting in low blood sugar, and then high blood sugar once again due to binge eating. So thank you for watching our video. We invite you to explore Marjorie on your own with a sample data set using this link.